from Wingate University and WUTV. This is Wingate Today. Coming up, lacing up their shoes to take on the city. Counting down the clock until the big day. Meet a German golfer who's found his swing in the Carolina Piedmont and an alum who works with some of the biggest names in the music industry. Plus, the Bard would be proud of this competition and student globetrotters doing good for others. But first, one day for Wingate. Hello and welcome to Wingate Today. I'm Jeff Atkinson. Most people don't think too much about it, but private colleges like Wingate University rely on tuition and generous donors to survive. They don't receive direct government help. This year, Wingate tried something different to mobilize an army of financial supporters. The event was called Day for Wingate. What is Day for Wingate? Day for Wingate is a day to show your pride. A day to tell the world how much your university means to you. On Thursday, March 27th, the university sent out this 90-second video to alumni, students, parents, faculty and staff, and friends, inviting them to make a donation to the school to participate in the greatest one-day giving event in Wingate history. Studies show 73% of consumers are more likely to buy something or take action after watching a video. Pictures are powerful. And to help circulate the video, we put the power of social media to work on Day for Wingate. With us now is Ben Richardson, who heads up our social media team at Wingate. So how was it? Jeff, it was an incredible event. Before launching the campaign, we recruited several online ambassadors consisting of alums, students, parents, and friends to help spread the word on their social media sites in hopes that our campaign would go viral from peer-to-peer -peer mentions on March 27th. On the actual day, our online ambassador numbers grew to 389 from 20 states and 3 countries, which allowed our messages to reach more than 335,000 people. But some of the most exciting aspects of the day, however, were people's outward expressions of love towards their school and alma mater. One alum even reached out to billionaire Mark Cuban in hopes of getting him to make an investment in our students, saying there's no better investment. All in all, the day was a great success. Several videos went viral along with a few other memes. Memes are pictures with animated quotes and sayings that just help the pictures come to life. And already we've tallied more than 80,000 in gifts and we're still counting, Jeff. Ben Richardson, thank you very much. In addition to new media for Day for Wingate, the university reached out in traditional ways as well, taking out a full-page ad in the Monroe Inquirer Journal, a letter from President Jerry McGee encouraging friends to consider making a gift or pledge. An economic impact study found Wingate University supports directly and indirectly a total of 1,515 jobs in Union County. McGee wrote, if you're doing business in the area, then you're benefiting from Wingate University being here. We're buying your products, eating in your restaurants, and buying your automobiles, he said. The university also hosted the annual Day for Wingate dinner, held on March 25th in Laverne Banquet Hall. A fundraiser each spring, a chance for community members to visit the campus, enjoy a meal, and support the Wingate students. The crowd heard from two seniors, Austin Hunt and Allison Cook, and from President McGee. Nearly $130,000 raised, all of it going to the annual fund, which supports students and the student experience. By the way, if you'd like to see the Day for Wingate video, we have the finished product posted online. Go to day 4 the number 4, wingate.org. Thousands laced up their shoes and took on the Queen City in the first race of the season, and one of the biggest. A team from Wingate University was among the record crowd that turned out in Uptown Charlotte. Pre-race festivities included posing for pictures and preparing to pound the pavement. Team Wingate, 65 members strong, alumni, employees, friends and family, gathered at the Wells Fargo Atrium to run in the BB&T Corporate Cup on March 8th. Two races in one, a 5K and a half marathon, 13.1 miles. Heather Delange, wellness and fitness coordinator, organized it. What better way to kind of bring Wingate together as a team and also to expose ourselves to other companies in Charlotte by doing this race? The idea came from Maria Chesley. This is really exciting. This is something that we could do as an institution and um, create a lot of good publicity for our team, for Team Wingate. Heather brought along her five-month-old baby and recruited her brother to come down from Minneapolis, the only one who wasn't cold. I'm not used to this kind of weather. No, it's usually negative 20 in Minnesota, so this is beautiful. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm warm right now in shorts and a sweatshirt. The Wingate runners competed against 70 other corporate teams, Duke Energy, URS, and Visit Charlotte. This alum started training months ago for the half marathon. Uh, started running a little bit more, doing some swimming and biking in there too, but really started focusing on upping my distance and 
getting to the point where I could do 13 miles comfortably. Once the warm-up was complete, a sea of humanity. It was time to take off. The music of Neil Diamond, the motivation. At the finish line, bananas and oranges awaited the runners. Team Wingate got together at the Aloft Hotel to celebrate some wins. I've done a couple of races up here in Charlotte, and when you run through you know, all the skyscrapers in downtown, or here in uptown, that's exciting, and I enjoy that, so that was probably my favorite part of the race. 3,414 runners competed. The race, sponsored by the Y, helps fund programs for youth, seniors, and families in the Charlotte area. Wingate University has been recognized by the National American Heart Association as a fit-friendly company, gold achievement. The award recognizes companies that promote a healthy workplace and a culture of wellness. Improvements on campus. 30 decorative streetlights have been put up along Haskins Drive next to the baseball stadium and beside Helms Hall to improve safety. The project cost about $36,000. Students and neighbors who walk in the area say they appreciate the lights at night. The university hopes to add more of these around campus. Those lights can come in handy for dozens of students who spent the night outside in March for the annual Winter National Campout. Just like lining up for a music concert, students pitch tents to be the first in line for when signups begin for the International Study Abroad programs. And when the location for the campout was announced, it was a mad dash to get set up. There are seven Winter National Seminars set for the next school year. The sounds of Old English filled campus as February drew to a close. Hundreds of area school kids competed in the annual Shakespeare competition. The 30th year it's been held at Wingate, one of the longest running in the country. Kristen Johnson was in the middle of the action, so how was it? This was your first time? Indeed it was, and to give you an idea of how this works, think American Idol competition, but instead of singing, it's acting out lines of Shakespeare. These middle and high schoolers have just a couple of months to prepare and memorize a sonnet, that's 14 lines of Shakespearean English, and and also to perform a monologue that's a speech given by a single person in a play. If I have things, it is a Getting up on stage reciting words written centuries ago, almost like interpreting a foreign language in front of a crowd, is not for the faint of heart. That knocks me thus. Yet is not madness. I did the Shakespeare competition these past two years and these past two times I've gotten honorable mentions. So inside I want to feel like I'm I want to do better. As any good performer will tell you, to be better begins with a brief warm up. Before hitting the stage, a behind the scenes look reveals one last run through. They have to communicate the meaning, and then they also have to transport the listener to wherever they are into that reality. Teacher Martina Smith says kids come into our classroom knowing very little, if anything at all, about Shakespeare, let alone the meaning behind his works. Smith says the competition helps fuel excitement for the classics by giving students a real-world opportunity to take what they learn outside of the classroom. If Shakespeare was alive today, he'd be a rapper. And the reason I say that is because he wrote in rhyme and rhythm and he wrote about subject matter that was important to the people of the time. And even today we care about love and loss and death. I performed Bottoms Monologue from Midsummer Night's Dream and I overdramatically kill myself several times. Now I am dead. It's not nerdy. It's pretty cool actually. It's fun. And it's not that hard to understand once you like really look at it. One of the event organizers and Wingate University English professor Dr. Allison Linhart knows the value of the experience. She competed in high school, won, and went on to the national competition. And I remember trying to choose the most obscure piece that I could so that no one else would do it. Rosaline. Top honors this year went to Brad Kessling. The Charlotte Christian High School student performed a monologue as the court jester from the show As You Like It. Kessling says his love for the spotlight grew after stepping foot on stage the first time he competed here. He calls the portrayal of the written work fulfilling. Surprised, he says, by the first place finish, he realizes now that the months of preparation pay off. Brad Kessling will now go on to perform in the national competition in New York City. Many of the students I spoke to say this got them thinking about acting as a career, Jeff. Thanks, Kristen. Someone else will be taking a trip is Dr. Robert Doak. Bob is the Wingate University professor who started the Shakespeare competition here 30 years ago. He's retiring in May. And to honor him, the English department gave Doak and his wife 
a trip to the American Shakespeare Center in Stanton, Virginia. We'll be airing highlights of the all-day Shakespeare competition this month. Look for it here on WUTV and on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wingate University. Well, it's spring and time for golf. Ryan Brown joins us now with a story about the newest international star at Wingate. That's right, Jeff. Wingate has over 500 athletes that participate in 22 NCAA sports. While the majority of those are American-born, the number of international Bulldog athletes continues to rise as recruiting becomes a worldwide process. The highest profile international athlete of recent years was swimmer Marco Blazewski, who was about to graduate after a stellar four-year career. The newest international sensation? That would be men's golfer Ben Gebhardt. Meet 25-year-old Ben Gebhardt, a graduate student on the men's golf team from Germany, who, after three top five finishes this year, finally broke through in March to get his first collegiate win. It felt awesome to finally win at the Salisbury tournament because I was pretty close in the fall season, but right now that I broke through, it's like, it feels amazing. It, it's somehow kind of a relief because I was so close last year. Yeah, it's been good for Ben. Uh, in the fall, he's finished in the top five twice. Down in Jacksonville, he had another top five. Uh, had a strong field in Armstrong Atlantic. He finished eighth. He had everything on his resume up until that point except for a win. And he had some adversity in the middle of the round, but he was able to fight through it and, and, and get the win. Gebhardt then won his very next tournament and Wingate's Hargett Memorial. But to really know Ben is to know how his journey in golf started. Normally a golfer gets into golf because through his, their parents. But for me it was different. It was like the first year in high school. We had like a project week, like in the last week before the summer. And I did the golf project. I liked it really much and I stick with it. Fast forward a decade for Gebhardt, with his undergrad completed in Frankfurt, Germany, Gebhardt still had dreams of being a college golfer and getting a master's degree. Going to the States was just obvious in my eyes. And then I talked to a placement uh, company and uh, they set up contact, the contact to Corey. And then I started to talk to him and yeah, I'm really happy then that it worked out for me. Ben was a little bit of a different situation because not too often do you have internationals coming over that want to get their masters, uh, especially as accomplished of a uh, junior golfer as Ben was. Thanks to success stories like Gebhardt and like swimmer Marco Blazewski and many others, the number of international athletes at Wingate will continue to rise, something Gebhardt thinks is a very important. As an international student, it's uh, kind of important to have fellow international students. Sometimes you just feel homesick and it's really nice to talk to someone who comes from the same culture. I met a lot of nice people over here, and I just love it here. I can totally recommend it to everybody else. With now two wins under his belt, Ben and his Wingate teammates have high hopes for the upcoming SAC tournament and plans for extending their season into May. I would love to win with the team the, the SAC Conference Championship because that will mean that we all can go to regionals. If that doesn't happen, I would love to go to regional as an individual and maybe make it to nationals. That would be like, like a super big dream. Now, Jeff, you heard that Gebhardt was enrolled in Wingate's NBA program. The German native picked up English in August before he came to Wingate and currently is working on a 3.75 GPA so far in his first year. Jeff, he's getting it done in the classroom and on the golf course. That's great. Thanks, Ryan. Keeping with the sports theme, a great tradition in the spring is Wingate's spring football game, which benefits the Boys and Girls Club of Union County. This year's scrimmage is Saturday, April 12th at 2 p.m. at the Irwin Belk Football Stadium. Bulldog fans are encouraged to contribute two bucks to get in. There'll be free food. All the money raised goes to the local Boys and Girls Club chapter. More than 130 kids are members. They range in ages from 6 to 18. This is, is very important um, in the case that anyone who comes out, especially like for this, uh, for this occasion, they give any donations, it actually helps us to run uh, our programs on a, on a daily basis. This is one of the local club's biggest fundraisers and head football coach Joe Reich says it's a win-win. We want our guys walking out of here having been involved with a number of different community service experiences that hopefully will help them when they get out and, and are um, adults or in positions of leadership that they can give back as well. The Boys and Girls Clubs offer after-school programs for young people. The Chronicle of Philanthropy is ranked at number one among youth organizations for 13 years in a row. Straight ahead, he's living his dream working in the music industry in Nashville. Wingate alum Joe Piver shares how his road to success started right here. And later, what would make these students spend their own money and give up their time for someone they don't even know? 
a heartwarming story you'll want to see coming up on Wingate Today. Welcome back to Wingate Today. He's one of the biggest booking agents of musical acts in the country and the focus of this month's alumni spotlight. Brian Stevenson hit the road and traveled quite a ways to catch up with this alum. Brian? Jeff, I am a long way from Wingate here in Nashville, Tennessee, the home of country music, but it is also the center of the contemporary Christian music world. And that's where I found Wingate alum Joe Piver living out his dreams that all started in Wingate. When you go to a concert and are enjoying the music, you probably aren't thinking about how the concert was planned. 2001 Wingate graduate Joe Piver is. He gets to see a concert take shape long before most of us even know it's happening. We set up all of the live shows for an artist. We either book the show with churches, book the shows with promoters. I've got acts that'll play anything from a small youth group with 50 kids to 16,000 people at an amphitheater in Houston. Joe is a senior booking agent for Jeff Roberts and Associates just outside of Nashville. They are one of the top booking agencies in the industry. And while you may have never heard of that company, you have probably heard of the contemporary Christian artists they represent. Groups like Building 429, Casting Crowns, Matthew West, Newsboys, and Skillet, to name a few. The agency represents about 30 artists in all. For Joe, planning and booking concerts is something that he's been doing since college. After booking a few shows near his home in Shalote, he booked a big show at Wingate. So we booked the show, it cost me 3,000 bucks. The Christian Student Union paid for it. We did it at the Cuddy Arena. We had about 900 people. And from that point on, I was rolling. From concerts in Cuddy Arena to venues across the country, it has been a dream job for Joe. He stays on the road a lot, especially in the territory where his bands are playing. So any state circled in black, these are all the states that I handle all the live shows for. Texas is the biggest state he covers, and as you might expect, it turned out one of the biggest crowds ever for a show he has booked. It was a sellout show for the group Casting Crowns. That night, I just sat there and watched the show from the back in tears, thinking this is something I could only have dreamed of. It's an exciting job, but for Joe and his co-workers at Jeff Robertson Associates, it's a lot more than that. I'm not the voice. The way we look at it is God says we're all parts of the body. We're the feet that get the artists there, and then they're the voices. He says the company is a family atmosphere in many ways. In fact, his wife works in the office next door. My wife, she actually handles basically everything that has to do with technology for our company. She helps uh, with the websites. She does the graphic design for the company. No matter where the music world takes him, Joe always looks fondly at the foundation he was given at Wingate. It helped me to really develop my character because I was running at a pace of lifestyle where if someone 
had not stopped me, I would probably not be here today. I, I definitely wouldn't be working and doing what I'm doing, living dreams. Just a great young man, Jeff, and of course, a great example for Wingate University. Reporting from Nashville, I'm Brian Stevenson for Wingate Today. Thanks, Brian. For another Wingate alum and his wife, this has been an anxious spring, watching events unfold in their native country of Ukraine. The violent, fiery images of Kiev dominating international news are not the Ukraine Vasil Kokla and his wife Maria Karun left behind several years ago when he came to Wingate to go to school. The situation in Ukraine uh, got out of control, so it's difficult to predict what might happen next. I wish I, I was there and what I could do, maybe I would go, but you feel like, okay, but if, if they would kill me. So we, we are happy that we are here, here in America. But Vasil and Maria's families are still in Ukraine. Maria is from the eastern part of the country where most people side with Russia. We are proud to see our countrymen in Ukraine fighting so bravely. And we would like to track it almost any time we can. And we do, but we are glad we have the support of our American friends. The couple was interviewed by NBC Charlotte WCNC-TV. They said one thing that comforts them is knowing that Americans are concerned about what's going on. Like all of us, they are hoping for a peaceful resolution. A Wingate professor was called in for reaction on the unrest in Ukraine. Political science professor Dr. Joseph Ellis was interviewed live on WBTV Channel 3's 4 o'clock news in early March by anchor Jamie Bowl. Ellis was asked about Russia's president. Why is Ukraine so important to Vladimir Putin? So if you look at where Ukraine is posi positioned, it's surrounded by a number of really interesting countries, Poland, Romania, uh, uh, Hungary, uh, Slovakia, all countries in the European Union. Right. To the north, it's surrounded by Belarus, a country that's hard line for Russia, and then Russia's right there as well. So if Ukraine were to tilt westward, this creates a lot of political difficulties for Vladimir Putin. Because Ellis is an expert on Russia and the politics of that part of the world. He's made trips to Eastern Europe and is taking a group of students there this summer. Politics of a different kind now. In late February, Wingate hosted a renowned political scientist from the University of Nebraska, Dr. John Hibbing. Hibbing has conducted research into where our political attitudes come from. His research has asked, for example, are there biological and genetic predispositions that make us liberals or conservatives? He says there are. We could use a little bit more tolerance in the political arena. This doesn't mean you don't have strong beliefs and you can't think those people are wrong, but you have to understand they're wrong because from a biological cognitive point of view, they are different than we are. Hibbing doesn't take himself too seriously. He was interviewed on the subject on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. On the serious side, he's been awarded a National Science Foundation grant for his work. This next speaker, Newsweek Magazine, cited as one of the 150 women who shake the world. She is Cheryl Wu Dunn, and she was here in mid-March. Wu Dunn's resume is lengthy, former investment banker at Goldman Sachs, New York Times executive and journalist, Pulitzer Prize winner. Today, she also lectures on economic, political, and social topics related to women in the developing world, and has written a book, Half the Sky, Turning Oppression into Opportunity for Women Worldwide. We all have won the lottery of life. The question is, how do you discharge that responsibility? So, here's the cause. Join the movement, feel happier, live longer, and help save the world. Thank Cheryl Wu Dunn is the first Asian American to win a Pulitzer Prize. In addition to being a lecturer, she also runs Triple Edge, which focuses on socially driven investing. It's the time of year all students look forward to, no matter what age they are. And for seniors graduating from college, the clock is ticking. Kim Williams joins us now from the heart of the Wingate campus, the Camden Promenade area. Kim? Well, Jeff, we're out at the Promenade to find out what's happening with the graduation fair. Graduation is a little less than two months off. Hooray! On the first day of spring, seniors gathered on the Promenade to finalize details for their upcoming graduation. Like a one-stop shop, they could go from table to table and make all the necessary arrangements. They even got a free meal out of it. It allows them to finish everything that they need to do before graduation, other than their classes and their Lyceum events, um, all in one place, so that they don't have to have anything worrying them. Taylor estimates that about 600 students will graduate this year, with about 500 going through the commencement ceremony. They could purchase their cap and gown in the bookstore during the fair or order diploma frames and class rings. Anticipation was definitely in the air. I have to admit, as a parent of a Wingate senior, I was also filled with anticipation. It's a lot of mixed emotions. I'm ready to graduate, but then it's 
Just getting into the real world is kind of the scary part. Graduation is kind of bittersweet. I'm excited to graduate, but I'm also kind of nervous about what's going to come next. I'm just looking forward to, to see the faces of my parents and uh, just to, you know, to be excited about the, the, you know, a very important day in my life. Well, I'm not really ready for it. Ready or not, graduation is approaching and finding a job is on their minds. During the graduation fair, seniors could meet with the Career Services Office and finalize their billing statements while grabbing a payday candy bar, all in the spirit of fun. They also needed to make sure they had met their Lyceum requirements of attending 40 events during their Wingate tenure. Our Lyceum program is an opportunity for students to experience cultural events outside of the classroom. It's kind of a co-curricular thing. As students make the transition from senior to alumni status, they meet with the Office of Alumni Relations to see what's ahead for them, like homecoming, socials, alumni sporting events and receptions, as well as an opportunity to travel on the annual international trip that went to Italy last year and plans to go to Scotland and England this summer. The number one thing is they will get lots of communication from us. They get a monthly e-newsletter. Um, they will get a magazine that goes out three times a year, and then they'll have the opportunity to join in events. Excitement was in the air for sure, and no doubt will continue over the next several weeks for parents like me, the professors who taught these seniors, and most of all for the class of 2014. Actually, I'm really excited to be graduating. I have hit a place in my life where I'm ready to start a new chapter and see what the world has to offer and start this new career that I'm really excited about. I will always remember my alma mater. In the land of Carolina, neath the sky so blue. Today is a big day for seniors. But the bigger day is going to be May 17th at the commencement ceremony. Thanks, Kim. A follow-up now to a story Kim reported on a few months ago. Take a look at this. Yes, that's 11-time Olympic medalist Ryan Lotke. Wingate junior Victoria Tormenti met him in March and presented the world champion swimmer with the painting she created of him. Tormenti took on the project for a class assignment encouraged by her teacher to pick a subject she loved, and that's swimming. And through a connection of friends, Lotke learned of the painting and then offered to purchase it. It was a dream come true for Tormenti, who swims on Wingate Swim Team. She plans to do a series of swimming-related paintings for her senior project next year. We're all well aware of the horror stories of spring break. Well, some Wingate students went a different direction. They spent their week off serving others in communities across the U.S. There was a group that went to Seattle, Washington and built a facility for disabled children there. One group worked with Habitat for Humanity in Mariana, Florida in the Panhandle. And in Charleston, South Carolina, students did work at an animal shelter and humane society. Earlier this year, a group of Wingate students got to see a part of the world most people have never seen. The only country in Africa that's never been colonized, Ethiopia. They can smile about it now, but what they went through wasn't for the faint of heart. No running water, smelly conditions, having to rough it. Ashlyn Hardy remembers it started with a phone call from a friend. She's like, my parents are going in December if you guys want to go, like, now's your chance to do it. She took the bait and with five other Wingate students and a leader, traveled to Ethiopia for two weeks over the Christmas break, 7,453 miles from home to a country in the Horn of Africa, the second most populated nation on the African continent. It was kind of like a joke on the trip that we wish we could just stick people there. Like, they, we would just wish that there were people from home we could just take and have them just be there just because it's like an experience that you kind of have to just have for yourself. This was no trip to the beach. They went there for two weeks to do good with the group Bridge to Ethiopia. They designed pink t-shirts for the trip. A nonprofit founded by Becky Threat and her husband six years ago when they lived in Ethiopia. I love Africa and I love the other countries that I've lived in, but I will say that Ethiopia has my heart. And I think it's because they just need so much. Sorry. All right. um, they are a beautiful people. But a hard country to live in. Life expectancy is 58 years old, compared to the United States, 79. The average income per person, $410. In the U.S., it's about $42,000. The team was made up of players from Wingate's women's soccer team and students in the university's new nursing program, where Threat works. I'm more than proud of this group. Here's a group of students without any credit, without any advertising, not publicizing themselves, have done an amazing job. They held soccer camps for girls in the morning, the fields were just plain dirt, and conducted eye clinics during the afternoon. Nursing student Robert Sibley remembers the lines of people who showed up at his makeshift medical office, which consisted of a suitcase tied between two trees. 
It was definitely an eye-opening experience about different areas of the world that really need help and people that really want help but don't know how to get it and there's no way to get them that help unless people like us go overseas and help them. So why did they do it? Travel to a place many foreigners won't go and use up their vacation time and pay their own way. It was just something we just really thought we should do and like we wanted to do it because we thought it would be like a good cause. We wanted to do it just to see another part of the world that we hadn't seen before. Everybody should do this at least once in their life. It opens your eyes up to how fortunate people here are and how lucky we are and it helps you grow as a person. The trip cost students about $2,300. They say they came back changed with a greater understanding of the world and an appreciation of the friendships they made. If you'd like to know more about Bridge to Ethiopia, visit bridge2ethiopia.org. And finally here, there was a special unveiling and dedication ceremony this spring of a new Zimbelstern for the Rivers Family Organ in Austin Auditorium. Zimbelstern, which is German for symbol star, consists of a metal or wooden star or wheel with several small bells mounted on it. The new Wingate Zimbelstern was a gift from Joe Hunter in memory of his wife. The dedication was capped off by an organ recital by Dr. Patrick Scott, one of the leading young organists in America. And as we close, the sights and sounds of an evening of music. I'm Jeff Atkinson. Thanks for watching Wingate Today.